the Dada Manifesto, 1918, by Tristan Zara. The magic of a word, Dada, which has brought journalists to the gates of a world unforeseen, is of no importance to us. To put out a manifesto, you, you must want ABC to fulminate against one, two, three, to fly into a rage and sharpen your wings, to conquer and disseminate little ABCs and big ABCs, to sign, shout, swear, to organize prose into a form of absolute and irrefutable evidence, to prove your non plus ultra and maintain that novelty resembles life, just as the latest appearance of some horror proves the essence of God. His existence was previously proved by the accordion, the landscape, the wheedling word. To impose your ABC is a natural thing, hence deplorable. Everyone does it in the form of crystal bluff Madonna, monetary system, pharmaceutical product, or a bare leg advertising, the art and sterile spring. The love of novelty is the cross of sympathy, demonstrates a naive germain foutisme. It is a transistory positive sign without a cause, but this needs itself is obsolete. In documenting art on the basis of the supreme simplicity, novelty, we are human and true for the sake of amusement, impulsive, vibrant, to crucify boredom. At the crossroads of the light, alert, attentively awaiting the years in the forest. I write a manifesto and I want nothing, yet I say certain things, and in principle I am against manifestos, as I am also against principle. Half pints to measure the moral value of every phrase, too convenient. Approximation was invented by the Impressionists. I write the manifesto to show that people can perform contrary actions together, while taking one fresh gulp of air. I am against action, for continuous contradiction, for affirmation to. I am neither for nor against, and I do not explain because I hate common sense. So that's the intro of the Dada Manifesto. We're going to be reading this one in parts. Um, the panel right now is Arjuna and Wayne. Um, so what did you guys think of that intro? Uh, can you just send me like the PDF of what you're reading this from too? Yeah, sorry. Um, it's, uh, it's in the chat. I'll like forward it. I'm sorry. It feels incoherent, as it seems like it's trying to be. And if you look at a lot of Dada-esque literature and poetry, it also tries to be incoherent. It's um, it's intended to be like absurd um, and to uh, kind of poke fun at the absurdity of modernity. Um, for some historical context, like it's a post World War One art movement, and a lot of these guys were like as a coping mechanism during the war and like the horrors that happened in World War One, they kind of just started like poking fun at a uh, reality, um, at the reality that was surrounding them um, in like the post-World War One years. So it was largely- just like trying German... to deconstruct everything. Yeah, it was largely a German art movement. So it is like a product of the uh, Weimar Republic era for historical context, Tristan Zara was Romanian, but Dada like is mostly associated with Germany. Um, but yeah, it's like meant to be absurd, and uh, yeah, they're kind of poking fun at uh, modernity. Um, so I can keep reading. He's also like a... poking hole at like my values, like principles too. Yeah. This reminds me kind of like Cam like Albert Camus and his like absurdist movement. Yeah, the uh existentialists. I like Camus a lot. Um he's not very like mm. fascist at all, but um No, he wasn't, he was a communist. Yeah, I was so uh, are so I'm actually I'm I'm right reading I'm actually reading him right now. Yeah. He's a he's a like, great I've read writer. his uh more like communist and stuff. And uh, yeah. what, what are you reading? I, 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 I like I'm well. I read like his uh, fiction novel, The Stranger, but right now I'm reading his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus. Okay, I, I have like a bunch of yet. essays from him. Yeah, I've read like The Fall, um, The Plague, mostly his fiction, not um his philosophy. I'm I'm want to read his essays first, like practice reading, like actual like uh academic work, like philosophy work. Then I'm gonna read his fiction. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's a great writer, though. Like I'm aware. Yeah, of the, poem, the, pl- the the stranger was pretty funny. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. Some kind, sometimes it's called the outsider. It depends on the uh, translation. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, I think the stranger's closer to the French um, meaning. Got it. Got it. I wouldn't know. Yeah. It's a good book. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw out there also. Um, Dada was resonated more with the communists than with the fascists. Um, well, yeah, because like they're anti. Very closely right? associated with futurism. I forget like that that one musical piece that I really like. It's yeah. Sort of the cubism, futurism, and Dadaism. Yeah, um, like the uh, the poet the poetic style that um Zara talks about where like he like takes a newspaper article cuts out all the words shakes them up in a bag and kind of like writes his poem in the order that the words come out in um it's very like the process is different but the but stylistically it comes out very close to marinetti's words and freedom and like the zang tum tum thing is like very proto dada I think it took a lot of influence from futurism, but um, yeah, but like they're against action and principles, which is like a major distinction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thematically, it's very different. Stylistically, um, there are similarities. It's not the same movement at all, though. Um, yeah, like it's it, contradictory. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, should I continue reading? Yeah. Go ahead. All right, the next section is called Dada Means Nothing. If you find it futile and don't want to waste your time on a word that means nothing, the first thought that comes to these people is bacteriological in character. To find its etymological, or at least its historical or psychological origin. We see by the papers that the crew Negroes call the tale of the holy cow Dada. The Cuban, the mother in a certain district of Italy are called Dada. A hobby horse, a nurse both in Russian and Romanian, Dada. Some learned journalists regard it as an art for babies, other holy Jesus calling the little children. Of learned journalists regard it as an art for, oh shit, I already read that, sorry. Uh, The other holy Jesus calling the little children of our day as a relapse into a dry and noisy, noisy and monotonous primitivism. Sensibility is not constructed on the basis of a word. All constructions converge on perfection, which is boring. The stagnant idea of a gilded swamp, a relative human product, a work of art should not be beauty in itself, for beauty is dead. It should be neither gay nor sad, neither light nor dark, to rejoice or torture the individual by serving him the cakes of sacred orioles or the sweets of a vaulted race through the atmospheres. A work of art is never beautiful by decree, objectively and for all. Hence, criticism is useless. It exists only subjectively, for each man separately, without the slightest character of universality. Does anyone think he has found a psychic base common to all mankind? The attempt of Jesus in the Bible covers with their broad benevolent wings. Shit, animals, days. How can one expect to put order into the chaos that constitutes that infinite and shapeless variation? Man. The principle, love thy neighbor, is a hypocrisy. Know thyself is utopian, but more acceptable, for it embraces wickedness. No pity. After the carnage, we still retain the hope of a purified mankind. I speak only of myself, since I do not wish to convince. I have no right to drag others into my river. I oblige no one to follow me, and everybody practices his art in his own way. If he knows the joy that rises like arrows to the astral layers, or that other joy that goes down into the minds of corpse flowers and fertile spasms, stilicities, seek them everywhere, in managers magnified by pain, eyes white as the hairs of the angel. And so Dada was born of a need for independence, of a distrust toward unity. Those who are with us preserve their freedom. We recognize no theory. We have enough cubist and futurist bourgeois. Rhymes ring with the assonance of the currencies and the inflection slips along the line of the belly and profile. All groups of artists have arrived at this trust company, utter riding their steeds on various comets, while the door remains open to the possibility of wallowing in cushions and good things to eat. 
Cubism was born out of a simple way of looking at an object. Suzanne painted a cup 20 centimeters below his eyes. The cubists look at it from above. Others complicate appearance by making a perpendicular section and arranging it conscientiously on the side. I do not forget the creative artists and the profound laws of matter which they established once and for all. The futurist sees the same cup in movement, a succession of objects one beside the other, and maliciously adds a few force lines. This does not prevent the canvas from being a good or bad painting suitable for the investment of intellectual capital. The new painter creates a world, the elements of which are also its implements, a sober, definite work without argument. The new artist protests. He no longer paints. Symbolic and illusionist reproduction, but creates directly in stone, wood, iron, tin, boulders. Locomotive organisms capable of being turned in all directions by the limpid wind, wind of momentary sensation. All pictorial or plastic work is useless. Let it then be a monstrosity that frightens servile minds, and not sweetening to decorate the refectories of animals in human costume, illustrating the sad fable of mankind. Um, so I guess I'll stop there again. Um, what did you guys think of that passage? Uh, it's where, like, <laughs> I could see where uh, this is like, where uh, I guess conservative criticisms of modern art originates from. Because, like, with, with, like, Peterson and other conservatives, like, oh, modern art's so bad, blah, blah, blah. And it originates from here because he's literally saying, I, we don't give a shit what others think about it. We do the art for yourself. It's all subjective criticism. Yeah, so but a lot bad. of the modern art that these people criticize, like, Geo posted that toilet, and yeah. Paul Joseph Rotson <clears throat> used that. And I just made the comment, that's, like, the original shit post. Because yeah, the is. context there is that they said we'll host any piece of art, so he just put in a toilet. Yeah, that's um, Mar <laughs> Marcel Duchamp, who was a Dadaist. Um, and yeah, it was kind of meant as a practical joke, I think. Um, and was. again, like poking fun at like the the, it's the also like why a lot of people make fun of Dadaists for being pretentious. Yeah, it's um, just the pretentious thing that some rich people did. He is kind of poking fun at like the establishment, like art critics um, in conservatories, which I think is kind of in keeping with futurism to a certain extent. Not that they would do the uh, the well, urinal, but I would they say did have a disdain to some extent challenge the limits of art. Yeah, in their own time, um, I don't think that. Yeah, so like this is where this is where like the root futurism of conservative problems with modern art, though, because Dadaism reject, re rejects like the ideas of beauty and so on and so forth yeah it rejects don't think... pretty much any concepts it's just absurd embraces pure absurdity which yeah. futurism also says embrace absurdity but not in the sort of same way futurism isn't nihilistic like dada is um dada yeah. is like intentionally um nihilistic when, the, when marinetti says embrace the wide map throw ourselves into the absurd, not in desperation, but to, no, throw ourselves into, ah, I forget the line, but it's not the same kind of absurd when they talk about The, the absurd what they talk about is just like, it's deconstruction. Marinetti mm -hmm. refers to the absurd in a very, like, poetic sense. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, with, with like, thinking. yeah, with, like, Dada, and this, like, the theme with Camus too. The absurd is something very tangible. It's literally just a deconstruction of experience. There's literally nothing. It, it, the, this manifesto, for example, will prompt up two con contradictions, then say, I do not care to explain because I'm against the reason. Yeah. That's yeah. the same thing with Camus. And I bring it up because I and see a lot of parallels. The, it also embraces the contradiction inherent to the absurd. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm bringing up Camus because it gives me a bunch of vibes from him, like the That's absurd. His absurdism. Yeah, it's very yeah. similar. Like the absurd for Camus, it's like it's like a feeling that's born out of your the relation of man to the world. And it's the realization that the world is innately meaningless. It's there's no purpose to anything. And mm -hmm. in more tangible terms, it's just the deconstruction of all your 
prior presuppositions to reality. So it's finding out that your epistemology is false, finding out your metaphysics is false, finding out your ontology is false, basically everything like that, all of that crashes down. That's what the absurd is. Sort of embracing the nothing that is the absurd. Yeah. And also ties into like rejection of tradition because Camus makes the point that the absurd is found within like the repetition, like the most menial tasks, like going to the co the coffee shop every day, uh, op getting the same newspaper. All of this is the absurd. So like revolting against these menial traditions would be embracing yourself in the absurd because you're literally just saying there's no point to any of this. We should reject it or I will yeah. reject it. I do like this uh, one section. The principle, love thy neighbor, is a hypocrisy. Know thyself is utopian, but more acceptable, for it embraces wickedness, no pity. I do like that line. Um, it is kind of like egoist um, and anti, uh, anti collectivism almost. Um, he, he goes yeah, on to it say is anti collectivist. Then, yeah. Dadaism has to be. Yeah. He, he goes on to say, and so Dada was born of a need for independence, a, a distrust towards unity. Those who are yeah, with us preserve the, their freedom. We recognize no theory. It, you, sort of absurdity, the nothing that is the absurd as something liberating. Yeah. Yeah. Which you hear from a lot of nihilists, too, when you ask them to defend nihilism. It's sort of like, there's two ways you can look at it. Life is meaningless. Maybe I should kill myself. Well, killing myself is just as meaningless, and anything I do is just as meaningless. And there's sort of a matter. positive outlook between those two. Doesn't matter. Do whatever the attitude. fuck you want. Yeah. yeah. That's what kind of attitude. Nietzsche said. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no meaning. Craft your own meaning. But like with mm -hmm. Dada and, and like Camus, like they just say it's meaningless. What doesn't matter. You don't need Embrace to craft your own meaning. The, Embrace yeah. the nothing. Embrace the nothing. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. makes it more consistent than Nietzsche, because you're just propping up something that you know doesn't exist. Nietzsche was not consistent in the slightest. <laughs> he intentionally contradicts himself, too. So he doesn't it care. It harder to read him. It's hard he to read care. him, because he will talk about, like, playing with the reader. So, yeah, uh, like he he says like one thing how uh and, and beyond good and evil he rejects appeals to nature, but then in like I think it was Twilight of the Idols or um or what's his other book um Birth of Tragedy heard. he makes appeals to nature. <laughs> well, Birth of Tragedy is one of his most or, or one of his earliest works. And yeah, I and he rejects it later on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but and uh. He it's all about the idols, which is actually one of his last works. He says yeah. the same shit. Like, mm -hmm. he says that, like, morality is fake and just, like, a false attempt, like, a futile attempt at trying to improve humanity. But then he says we need to create a new morality. It's, so, a, it's a contradiction on its face. So Yeah, he doesn't give a really, shit, though. You can't really take it seriously. And also, like, in, like... I can't take Nietzsche seriously. seriously. In human all too human, he says Plato may be right, but I don't care. It's just this concept. Wait, really? Where? In human all too human, the introduction. Not the introduction, like the earliest chapter. Uh, like do you says, have an exact oh, quote? Yeah, he's just, I have all human all too human on my bookshelf. I, like uh, I want that exact like, quote. That's funny. Because he like says the stuff like, Oh, well, Platonic metaphysics may be true, they may not be true. I don't really care. This is a pretentious discussion. Oh, uh, do you have an exact quote? Let me open it. Let Thanks. All right, you can continue. You can just, like, send it to me. Yeah, I'll okay. Send it to you. I'm going to keep reading then? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Philosophy is the question. From which side shall we look at life? God, the idea, or other phenomenon. Everything one looks at is false. I do not consider the relative result more important than, than the choice between cake and cherries after dinner. The system of quickly looking at the other side of a thing in order to impose your opinion indirectly is called dialectics. In other words, haggling over the spirit of fried potatoes. 
while dancing method around it. If I cry out, ideal, 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 knowledge, 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 boom, 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 boom. I have given a pretty faithful version of progress, law, morality, and all other fine qualities that various highly intelligent men have discussed in so many books, only to conclude that after all, everyone dances in his own personal boom, boom, and that the writer is entitled to his boom, boom, the satisfaction of pathological curiosity, a private bell for inexplicable needs, a bath pecuniary, oh shit, sorry. Um, my computer's fucking up. Um, sorry. A bath, pecuniary difficulties, a stomach with repercussions and tile, the authority of the mystic wand formulated as the bouquet of a phantom orchestra made up of silent fiddle bows greased with filters made of a chicken manure. With the blue eye glasses of an angel, they have excavated the inner life for a dime's worth of unanimous gratitude. If all of them are right, and if all pills are pink pills, let us try for once not to be right. Some people think they can explain rationally by thought what they think, but that is extremely relative. Psychoanalysis is a dangerous disease. It puts to sleep the anti-objective impulses of man and systematizes the bourgeoisie. There is no ultimate truth. The dialectic is an amusing mechanism which guides us in a banal kind of way to the opinions we had in the first place. Does anyone think that, by a minute refinement of logic, he has demonstrated the truth and established the correctness of these opinions? Logic imprisoned by the senses is an organic disease. To this element, philosophers always like to add the power of observation. But actually, this magnificent quality of the mind is the proof of its impotence. We observe, we regard from one or more points of view. We choose them among the millions that exist. Experience is also a product of chance and individual faculties. Science disgusts me as soon as it becomes a speculative system, loses its character of utility. That is so useless, but is at least individual. I detest greasy objectivity and harmony, the science that finds everything in order. Carry on, my children, humanity. Science says we are the servants of nature. Everything is in order. Make love and bash your brains in. Carry on, my children, humanity. Kind bourgeois and journalist virgins. I am against systems. The most acceptable system is on principle to have none. To complete oneself, to perfect oneself in one's own littleness, to fill the vessel with one's individuality, to have the courage to fight for and against thought, the mystery of bread, the sudden burst of an infernal propeller into an economic lilies. Um, so that concludes that section. Um, thoughts? Uh, give me a sec, sorry. No problem. Um, I think he kind of just elaborates on what he said in the, the first half of uh, that section. Dada means nothing. Um, it's kind of a more poetic... Um, elaboration on the ideas in the first part um, that we discussed. Um, so final thoughts on uh, Dada means nothing before I move into active simplicity. Dada means life, said Francis Bacaglia. What was that, Dada means life? Yeah, Francis Bacagel in the Cannibal Manifesto said Dada means life. Yeah, we should do uh, Francis Picabia at some point, too, in the Cannibal Manifesto. That's a great read as well. I like it. Yeah, he was a great artist, like, stylistically. I like him a lot. Um, yeah, Tristan Zara... Like what... A few different styles that he does, though. Let's yeah, do Tristan Zara wasn't really a painter. He was more of a poet, kind of like Marinetti. Um, but yeah, Picabia did paint, and... Um, I don't know. I like his artwork a lot. Um, other painters associated or artists associated with Dada are, are like um, Max Ernst is probably my favorite. Um, probably my favorite German painter of the 20th century. Um, he was a big one. Man Ray is another one. Um, yeah, Francis Picabia. Those are like three of the most well-known ones. I'm sure I'm forgetting tons, but I'm just running off of memory right now. 
Yeah, should I move on and read the next section, Act of Simplicity? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Act of Simplicity. Inability to distinguish between degrees of clarity, to lick the penumbra and float in the big mouth filled with honey and excrement, measured by the scale of eternity. All activity is vain. If we allow thought to engage in an adventure, the result of which would be infinitely grotesque, and add significantly to our knowledge of human impotence. But supposing life to be a poor farce without aim or initial part parturition, and because we think it our duty to extricate ourselves as fresh and clean as washed chrysanthemums, we have proclaimed as the sole basis for agreement art. It is not as important as we mercenaries of the spirit have been proclaiming for centuries. Art afflicts no one, and those who manage to take an interest in it will harvest caresses and a fine opportunity to populate the country with their conversation. Art is a private affair. The artist produces it for himself. An intelligible work is the product of a journalist. And because at this moment it strikes my fancy to combine this monstrosity with oil paints, a paper tube simulating the metal that is automatically pressed and poured, hatred coward as villainy, the artist, the poet, rejoiced at the venom of the masses, condensed into a section chief of this industry. He is happy to be insulted. It is a proof of his immutability. When a writer or artist is praised by the newspapers, it is a proof of the intelligibility of his, of his work, a wretched lining of a coat for public use, tatters covering brutality, piss contributing to the warmth of an animal brooding vile instincts, flabby, insipid flesh reproducing with the help of the typographical mi microbes. We have thrown out the crybaby in us. Any infiltration of this kind is candied diarrhea. To encourage this act is to digest it. What we need is works that are strong, straight, precise, and forever beyond understanding. Logic is a complication. Logic is always wrong. It draws the threads of notions, words, and their formal exterior toward illusory ends and centers. Its chains kill. It is an enormous centipede stifling independence. Married to logic, art would live in incest, swallowing, engulfing its own tail, still part of its own body, fornicating within itself, and passions would become a nightmare tarred with pro Protestantism, a monument, a heap of ponderous gray entrails, but the suppleness, enthusiasm, even the joy of injustice, this little truth which we practice innocently and which makes it beautiful. We are subtle and our fingers are malleable and slippery as the branches of that sinuous, almost liquid plant. It defines our soul, say, say the cynics. That too is a point of view, but all flowers are not sacred. Fortunately, and the divine thing in us is to call to anti-human action. I am speaking of a paper flower for the buttonholes of the gentlemen who frequent the ball of mass light, the kitchen of grace, white cousins, lithe or fat. They traffic with whatever we have selected. The contradiction and unity of poles in a single toss can be the truth. If one absolutely insists on uttering this platitude, the appendix of a libidinous, malodorous morality, morality creates atrophy like every plague produced by intelligence. The control of morality and logic has inflicted us with impassivity in the presence of policemen who are the cause of slavery, putrid rats infecting the bowels of the bourgeoisie, which have infected the only luminous clean corridors of glass that remained open to artists. Let each man proclaim, there is a great negative work of destruction to be accomplished. We must sweep and clean, Affirm the cleanliness of the individual uh, after the. All right, but I gotta go. Okay. Um, all right. See, ya. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging out for a bit. All right. Let me start that paragraph again. Um, let each man proclaim there is a great negative work of destruction to be accomplished. We must sweep and clean. Affirm the cleanliness of the individual after the state of madness. Aggressive, complete madness of a, of a world abandoned to the hands of bandits who rend one another and destroy the centuries without aim or design, without organization, indomitable madness, decomposition. Those who are strong in words of, or force will survive, for they are quick in defense. The agility of whims and sentiments 
flame on their faceted flanks. Morality has determined charity and pity, two balls of a fat that have grown like elephants, like planets, and are called good. There is nothing good about them. Goodness is lucid, clear, and decided, pitiless toward compromise and politics. Morality is an injection of chocolate into the veins of all men. The task is not ordered by a supernatural force, but by, but by the trust of idea brokers and grasping acad ac academicians. Sentimentality at the sight of a group of men quarreling and bored. They invented the calendar and the medicament wisdom. With a sticking of labels, the battle of the philosophers was set off. Mercantilism, scales, meticulous and petty measures. And for the second time, it was understood that p pity is a sentiment like diarrhea in relation to the disgust that destroys health, a foul attempt by corrigion carry on corpses to compromise the sun. I proclaim the opposition of all cosmic faculties to this gonorrhea of a putrid sun issued from the factories of philosophical thought. I proclaim bitter struggle with all the weapons of Dadaist disgust, and then he goes into the uh, final section, um, which we will read in a bit. It's down to just me and Lane. Um, so, what did you think of that section, Lane? It was good, I guess. Part of my mind, part of me was distracted. I was looking for the section that I was talking you... about in Nikshi, and I found it. So, I guess. Okay, that's good. Um, Hmm, what to say about There's this also section? A rejection of materialism in that section. We behold all things through the human head. Cannot be cut off. Cannot cut off this head. Oh, wait, I misread it. So, no, it's just a rejection of metaphysics. Yeah, um, I definitely. It. I read this two, I don't know, like two years ago. So, there's a yeah. bit of a misnomer there. Um, definitely the rejection of morality in this section like he says morality is an injection of chocolate into the veins of all men the task is not ordered by a supernatural force but by the trust of idea brokers and grasping ac academicians i don't know how to pronounce that fucking word um mm -hmm. yeah it's like morality is like he's saying it's a spook like it, yeah. it makes people feel good and like makes them feel safe or whatever but it has no yeah but Nietzsche yeah. just says that it's built off assumptions therefore just pointing out any criticism makes it false which is bs but yeah but it's also sort of like we were talking about the politics earlier of Dada is it sort of like why should you be a communist or be an anarchist when there's no morality, especially since anarchism proper is inherently ethical as the basis, the rejection of all, in their view, unjust hierarchy and hierarchy here is whatever sort of goes against that negative view of liberty. Yeah, I am seeing like a lot of parallels with like uh, anarcho egoism more like maybe Max yeah. Sterner or Renzo Novatore than like uh, anarchism more... proper that you would see in Bakunin or Kapotkin. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's definitely not like the Christian anarchism of like Tolstoy or yeah, it's more uh, like it's... egoism. Yeah, which um... is against anarchism proper. But you're talking about egoism, anarchism proper in practice. It's in practice allows for the greatest e extension of your ego so thus the yeah. ego would support it yeah well the goal is like absolute freedom from all constraints and um oppressive structures so but i think that it's interesting that max turner in like a few lines in the ego on its own like for example one he just talks about whether it be from a chat Violence is good, whether it be from a pet peasant or a Chinese emperor. And there's like a few other lines that sort of sound like a praise of the stronger. So there's yeah. also sort of a domination, which goes against anarchism proper. So it's sort of like egoist almost sort of would subvert anarchism. 
Yeah. It's a version of anarchism, really. Yeah. Sort of like well, when you're having Chaz, that one guy pretty much took over Rod Simone. Yeah. Um, that, that's sort of what would happen because you have no reason to reject your own authority. Yeah. I know I bring it up all the time, but um, that line from Salo, like, we fascists are the only true anarchists. And the only true anarchy is the anarchy of power. Um, Anar power is inherently anarchistic because it does what it wants. Exactly. Um, and it like has um, transcended all illegitimate forms of authority and, you know, mm -hmm. taken the reins itself and can impose itself on whoever it feels like. Well, with a lot of the fascists, you sort of have an almost egoism turning into yeah. like a strong collectivism. Yeah, for sure. Um, sort of through that sort of method or through something just sort of through like an almost sort of homoeroticism in a sense, not in the sense that homoeroticism in a sexual sense, but in the term of male bonding. Yeah. Um, it's too bad um, Arjuna had to take off because that's kind of his area of expertise. Um, um, like futurism, there's a lot of worship of masculinity. Thus, it leads into a military culture and a warrior yeah. culture, which is inherently collectivistic. And that all coming from like a root of a type of egoism, in a sense. Yeah. And like Marinetti praises individualism many times, which goes against like how people view fascism. As like inherently collectivist and about the nation well, I and as inherently collectivist, it just sort of has this weird little egoist root in it. Yeah, That's um, interesting. It brings to mind this Julius Evola quote. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, you also have that sort of like individualism and collectivism in the Jacobins. Yeah. So, I, don't know, I posted it on the Telegram. Like the Jacobins, of like a nationalism as we think of it. So, yeah, I don't know. I can't find it right now. I don't want to spend too much time looking. Um, so, should I continue reading? There's only one sure. section left. So, Dadaist sure. discuss. Every product of disgust capable of becoming a negation of the family is Dada, a protest with the fists of its whole being engaged in destructive action. Dada, knowledge of all the means rejected up until now by the shamefaced sex of comfortable compromise and good manners. Dada, abolition of logic, which is the dance of those impotent to create. Dada, of every social hierarchy and equation set up for the sake of values by our valets. Dada, every object, all objects, sentiments, obscurities, apparitions, and the precise clash of parallel lines or weapons for the fight. Dada, abolition of memory. Dada, abolition of archaeology. Dada, abolition of prophets. Dada, abolition of the future. Dada, absolute and unquestionable faith in every god that is the immediate product of spontaneity. Dada, elegant and unprejudiced leap from a harmony to the other sphere, trajectory of a word tossed like a screeching phonograph record, to respect all individuals and their folly of the moment, whether it be serious, fearful, timid, ardent, vigorous, determined, enthusiastic, to divest one's church of every useless, cumbersome accessory, to spit out disagreeable or amorous ideas like a luminous waterfall or coddle them with the extreme satisfaction that it doesn't matter in the least. With the same intensity in the thicket of thicket of coarse souls pure of insects for blood well born and gilded with bodies of archangels. Freedom, da 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 da, a roaring of tense colors and interlacing of opposites and of all contradictions, grotesques, inconsistencies, light. And that's how uh, the Dada Manifesto by Tristan Zara ends. Um, thoughts on embracing contradictions. Yeah, I like it's basically the line of Dada worships all gods. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's basically a rejection of all um, morality, of all like, um, of all like accepted structures of um, of like control, of like thought and control. Um, abolition of logic, which is the dance of those imp too impotent to create. Um, every social data of every social hierarchy and equations set up for the sake of values by our valets. Um, and he goes on. Um, it's basically, I think it promotes just. Um, just do what you want. Might is right. Yeah. So contradictions within that. Yeah. Self-expression for the sole sake that it makes you feel good in the moment. Um, don't worry too much what other people think or how they're going to react to it or how your actions are going to affect them. Like he says earlier, no pity, um, embrace wickedness. Um, yeah, it is very, yeah, I would describe this very and voice. embrace any contradiction within that. That's, that's what its conclusion. Yeah. Like the line, we worship all gods. It wants you to embrace any contradiction in the absurd, the nothing that is the absurd. Yeah. Um, so yeah, our uh, panel. Because I'm against logic and reason. Yeah. I, I don't have much more to say. Our panel kind of shrank. I think a lot of people didn't know what to say about the Dada Manifesto, mm -hmm. so. Well, it, does, it, this one it doesn't promote egoism. It would end up promoting my is right, I guess. Although my yeah. is right is different from typical egoism, because my is right <clears throat> sort of views race as something good and something that you're a part of, and it wants to advance race. Yeah, so that, that, mm -hmm. that is like tribalism. So like, yeah, I wouldn't describe my is right as... It, it gives an egoistic defense of tribalism, though. Yeah. Because it views yourself as part of a community, that community benefits you. But if it doesn't benefit you, you should go against it. Yeah, it's an egoistic defense of tribalism. People like Julie also give that defense of nationalism. If you ask them, why should I be a national nationalist? This there's this community that affects you. That you happen to be a part. You enter into a community, and then that community affects you. So if there's something good happens for the community, it's gonna be good for you. Something bad happens to the community, it's gonna be bad for you. My is right gives that argument for race and for a friendship, which Max Turner doesn't, which kind of, actually no, he starts to with like the union of egos. Yeah. The which, union um, of egos. Which the problem there you sort of run to is what's the next step from the union of egos but civil society and from civil society to the state. Yeah. Well, the, the union of egoists is like um, we didn't fully push that out though. Yeah, yeah it's Just like a it's it's a collective of individuals, mutually who, agreeing individuals that sort of decide yeah. we're all going to work together for a common goal, but anyone can leave. It's, it's yeah. it doesn't really work that way though. Against yeah. human nature and human organization, it's not how humans organize. My is right yeah. actually recognizes how humans organize. To be honest, I do kind of run futurism forever, like as a uh, union of egoists. I'm like, no one, no one's forced to participate in. Yeah, I would agree with that. This is a union of egos. Yeah, we we all we're all kind of like united by a love for futurism or like modern art or whatever or to a lesser extent fascism i'd i'd say we're kind of post-fascist we're not like orthodox fascist by any stretch but most of us come from like a fascist background um well, but yeah um, post left to white nationalist and to fascist yeah early, early early on i decided to run this as like a union of egoists which it's debatable whether that's actually what it is but like i'm not yeah, like when you enforce rules in the chat it's not but even then yeah well we don't then have don't really enforce them too well so no no one listens to me not exist. <laughs> practice I, non-existent so yeah yeah when i do try and implode implode impose rules like the people in the chat are not going to follow them 
Um, yeah. I think they know, like, I like them and I'm not going to kick them. So they don't have to I'm follow the rule. Them. You know, when I don't I'm like someone, they do get kicked. You know. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, the U.S. Final of Eagle doesn't but, propose that anyone can enter because if someone enters, it's going to go against the union. Yeah. It is like there has to be rules within a group for it to like function properly. Mm -hmm. um, how like strictly enforced they are or how loosely enforced they are um, is entirely like. Um, like I said, Sarah didn't really fully develop it. So kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Early on, I decided like that's the way I wanted to organize this though and make. We do everything on a voluntary Very basis. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I would consider myself a libertine to a certain extent. So, um, not to the extent like the sod, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, thing. <clears throat> I'm definitely not like a puritanical moralist kind of person i'm very loose on most things like um, i wish like you want to legalize pornography legal illegal make pornography illegal and legalize brothels um wasn't that um, what you're um, yeah i can elaborate on that like um it's not a very popular take in these circles but either are my views on drugs but like People always say that pornography should be outlawed or illegal, but um, I'm against that because we have all these incels who are very like sexually frustrated and pornography offers an outlet for their sexual frustrations. And if we were to take their pornography away, that frustration would manifest itself in potentially more destructive ways in society. I do think it should be harder to access than it is now, but I wouldn't outlaw it completely. There's also the issue of um, artistic expression and who decides or defines what pornography is. Like back in the That's 70s, true. the video nasties scare where they like banned and censored all kinds of like horror movies and stuff because they defined it as pornography. And you watch most of them now, they're not really that pornographic. They're kind of violent, and a lot of them do have nudity, but it's not like pornography as we understand there it is today. A to find pornography. There's like a yeah. line between what is pornography and what is art, but it's not clearly defined. Yeah, I think it is like subjective to a certain extent too. Um, that's why I wouldn't like broadly like just outlaw pornography. Um, mm -hmm. As far as like br you legalized legalize brothels, brothels and I don't, sex I don't have a problem goes, with that, yeah, um, I'm against moral crusades that I don't think can ever be won. I think there will always be women willing to sell themselves in that way, and I think there's always going to be men who are willing to pay for those services. Um, so as long as it's going to happen anyways, I'd rather it not be done on the black market where like exploitation goes on. Um, if it's like legalized, at least it can be uh, regulated and certain standards as far as like hygiene goes or standards of practice to avoid things like exploitation, to avoid the spread of STDs can go on. Um, you know, it shouldn't be encouraged, obviously, raise your kids right, and uh, hopefully they yeah. won't turn to that path, but I think it's always going to go on, and it should be, if, as long as it's going to be it going on, it should be. On, at least with, not pornography, but with prostitution, it has always been going on, no matter how much a society condemns it. Yeah. Well, they say it's the world's oldest profession, so I don't think outlawing it makes it go away. Um, and yeah, I think uh, if it's going to be going on, it can be. A lot of people try to say it's been forever, but I would argue that's debatable. Yeah. Um, again, it shouldn't I don't be encouraged. See a lot of what people cite as early pornography as pornography. So again, that yeah. goes into like, what is the line there? Yeah. There's not yeah, 
I'm generally against the government sticking their nose in matters concerning art, which is one of the points in the third futurist political manifesto. Like it shouldn't be up to like the government or people in authority to be art critics and decide decide what's acceptable and what isn't. They have no uh their opinion holds no real merit. Like the Nazis were all about banning art that they thought was uh, degenerate or unacceptable. They banned the futurists, they banned Dada, they banned surrealism, I mean, cubism. Anything please, somewhat exciting. Like, yeah, anything. Like, classical art can be talented, it can be beautiful, it can be amazing, but at the end of the day, it's kind of boring. Yeah. And like, we can't stay. in talent, but. Yeah, really... like we can't keep reproducing the same styles ad nauseum in, into infinity. Like our styles need to evolve. Um, we need new, fresh ideas, or people are going to get bored and you know are just not going to pay attention to it anymore. It's not going to speak to them. It's not going to speak to their time. Um, you know, a certain amount of freedom should be given to artistic people to express mm -hmm. themselves how they see fit. Um, I, I would never use the powers of the state yeah. to like repress that. Even if people do think it's uh, amoral or crude or um, in bad taste, I think that, you know, gangster rap music, for example, does speak to something that's real and exists in our society and kind of like sweeping it under the rug and pretending it's not going on is not all really rap music the blues was actually doing a lot of the same stuff they yeah for sure stuff that was just no one else was singing about like the song spoonful or what's the other one i don't remember there was a lot of blues songs that were singing about underground stuff and i yeah. argue jazz was sort of a white version of r b um i wouldn't describe jazz music as white music though like um no what the direction it started to go is clearly yeah. like a white jazz with the uh big band stuff like it started out like a very black art form and uh um, yeah. then in the 20s like white kids from like the suburbs started listening to it and uh it got more white it got Meanwhile, a lot blues, blacker so again with, the black uh, thing. yeah with bebop and uh the post world war one era when swing kind of became well, not post World War One. Um, like the '40s, it, it got yeah. like swing became passe, and um, it was smaller quintets and quartets. Um, it I wasn't dance it was white in origin. I just sort of became white people music. Yeah, saying. yeah. At this point, like people who listen to jazz music are mostly like they're all mid white men. middle a middle aged, educated white men who think rock and roll is uh well just people really infantile um yeah well people like some sort of pretentious for but but those people normally listen to classical yeah um anyways now the topic's off we should end it yeah um i think uh, we've said everything we wanted to say it would have been good if we had a bigger panel but uh mm -hmm. It's just how it turned out. I think we ended up with a pretty good discussion anyways. Um, I definitely like Dada. Um, you know, I wouldn't describe it as like fascistic or there are important differences between it and futurism, but. I like it as an art movement. Yeah, um, I like some of the ideas in it too. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Um, well, you're but... almost an egoist. It's like that original anarchy, that original fascism. It's almost yeah. just a egoism yeah I, I would describe myself as an egoist to a certain extent too i'm not like ideally we would have like collectives and stuff but people are just i'm not confident that there's going to be that i'm going to see like collectivism happen in my time in the current context Neither am I. I, don't, I don't think there's any real basis for collectivism anymore um, I'm, I don't I'm think just, it's a well, good thing, but are just black pilled. So. Yeah, yeah, I can relate to that. Anyway, um, let's leave it there. Um, we'll be back in two weeks, and we'll be talking about Marinetti again. So, I hope everyone enjoyed this talk. Uh, salute.